Hello and welcome to Raising Operations. You're with Simon today. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at an astrology update of the 27th of August, 2020. And um, as you can see from the little title of this video, Exposed, and this weird looking um, picture of metal faces with really, really what seems to be or can be interpreted as maybe a little bit happy over there, but in some sense, it may be a little bit disturbing. So um, I really feel like this video and this image uh, kind of succinct with each other. And um, hopefully today I'm going to kind of weave in the imagery that you're seeing here at the moment within the context of the astrology and hopefully uh, provide something of uh, food for thought while we traverse this uh, current energy at the moment. So just a couple of things uh, before we jump into it. Again, as I always encourage you to do, just find a space, you know, um, the video is not going to be too long. So, you know, just take your time to, to digest it. Um, this is a video and all of the content is really inviting you to self-reflect so that um, you get the best out of what it is that I'm trying to say here. The purpose is to just invoke um, the ability to think, you know, the ability to to feel and become very uh, aware of your space, your immediate environment, and and how this energy and how these um, messages kind of land within you, you know, and uh, yeah, just basically bringing you back down to the body, bringing you back down to um, your physical senses. All right. Okay. So what I saw in this imagery over here was you can make your own interpretation of it, but what I saw was, you know, we were, we're in a very, very weird place at the moment um, regarding 2020. Uh, we have Mars currently squaring Saturn, squaring uh, Pluto, squaring uh, Jupiter. We have uh, Mars very, very soon going to be going retrograde. Um, we're having an Earth trine with this, with Mercury and Uranus uh, and um, Jupiter. We've just had a fire trine, and in fact, today with the moon being conjunct the south node in Sagittarius, we've also got um, a fire trine still activated with um, Mars in the south node, right? So Venus is also, by the way, opposing Pluto, um, opposing Jupiter, more so opposing Jupiter in an exact opposition. And of course, it's also now forming a square to Cancer. Now, with all of that being said, um, and I've got a chart up, by the way, so we can look at the, all those details a little bit later. With all that being said, um, within June, July, we had lots of sort of eclipses. There was a tremendous amount of material coming from the unconscious into our physical awareness. And so, you know, that, that really destabilized a lot. And 2020 has been a really destabilizing year uh, in general, in terms of uh, a tremendous amount of impressions that we are taking in of the state of the world. And at the same time, as we're taking things in, we're also, depending on where you're on the world, um, connected to it, but not actually connected to it in the same way that, say, somebody in Australia would be connected to the experience of the lockdown that is currently taking place in Melbourne, you know, Victoria. The same would be for um, somebody that's living in Australia, for instance, that is not exposed to and is living in the States at the moment, where there's a tremendous amount of uh, protests going on, you know, trying to bring awareness to a lot of unresolved trauma that that is held within that society. And, and also bleeds into other parts of the world as well around um, where we as human beings over the last 500 years, 600 years, and even 1,000 years have been affected by um, our own darkness. And you can think of many other scenarios and many other situations, fires that took place in the beginning of this year. So but the emphasis here is 
we have been really experiencing a tremendous amount of intense uh, impressions from different areas of the world that are triggering um, a biological sort of function within ourselves, right? A biological reaction, which is um, the way that our nervous system operates. So when I say destabilizing, what I'm really saying is dysregulating, emotionally dysregulating. We're waking up and we're as consistently being bombarded with um, news medias, uh, giving this information, that information. We're trying to make sense of the world. There's a lot. And you know, what is an impression? Where do we get impressions from? Um, when we interact with other human beings, um, we're looking at their faces. We're seeing the impressions that other people have on their faces. We're seeing if this person seems to be happy or sad. And then on a more subconscious level, we're, you know, we're taking in subtle cues from the body. And as human beings, we are naturally attuned to, um, at a biological level, our nervous system is attuned to the safety of the environment through the impressions that we experience uh, while we interact with people. And so um, we are really in a peculiar place because while we are actually experiencing a tremendous amount of impressions from you know, people sharing on, on social media around their, their experience of living in a country that we are not in, um, our bodies are interpreting these experiences, okay? They're interpreting these experiences as real threats. And yet, we are not actually physically in the experience. And so an aspect or a part of our biological function that allows us to distinguish what's real and what's not real is cut off to a certain degree. And so this, of course, leads us to, if we're not conscious and if we're not mindful, to, in a sense, being psychologically and emotionally affected by the way that the chemistry of the body is operating and how we're taking things in. And this picture speaks so deeply to me because there, there's so many different dimensions to this. Okay, so let's see if I can kind of label them and put them out here. And why I say exposed, this is, you know, we're, we're, this is a time with these transits that I mentioned earlier about being deeply exposed. Now, how many of you feel, unless you're in some way, shape, or form, a little bit uh, masochistic in some way, it's okay. <laughs> We're all our sadists and masochists in some sense, and even depend, doesn't uh, depending on on what uh, you know, how the degree of it. But when you feel exposed, do you feel safe? Do you feel that you are? wanting to be open and expressive and creative when feeling exposed? The general answer is no. Okay. It's one of the reasons why we wear clothes. I'm going to pause there for a second and I want to tie in the imagery that you're looking at right now. Okay. Look at the faces. Look at the expressions that you're seeing on these faces. Do they feel to you like this is safe? Do they feel to you like you're witnessing and taking in something that seems to be joyful, happy, and um, open and creative? Or does it seem very cold, very harsh, very absent? You know, do they, do, do they even represent some pain, you know, like the expression of pain? And you know, while while, while I was just really, really allowing this imagery to take over my senses and, and, and really take it in, there was so much emotion that came to the surface, so much sadness, so much grief for my own experience, for everybody else's experience, for what it is that this image represents in terms of the expression and the impression of what you see here. And the word exposed that comes along with this is that although it looks like and seems like the dysregulation and the uh, pain, you know, that is emerging through what we see in the world and, and what we get exposed to, <laughs> you see, what are you being exposed to? What are you exposing yourself to? 
everything is an impression and everything comes from the limbic system in terms of the emotional expression. If you're happy, your amygdala is feeling small and doesn't sense threat. If you're feeling threatened or closed down and your nervous system is in a fight response, your amygdala might feel that there is a threat around you. And so this biological evolutionary function um, is you know, alarmed and it is larger. And so what are you exposing yourself to? What are you taking in? What impressions are landing on you? And do you know where the boundary is in the context of what it is that you're allowing to move from the outer chaotic space that is the world and your personal boundary where your space meets the chaotic space? So think of like an ocean, for instance, right? Where and, and the beach. Think about the natural boundary that takes place between the sand and the beach and land and the ocean. The ocean can be perceived as the, the collective unconscious. It can be perceived as the um, internet, as it were, and what you're taking in, right? And then you have your personal land. And where does your boundary start? And you know, where obviously it starts within yourself and your center. And then it moves towards uh, the place that you feel the most comfortable with. So this is another thing here. It's about personal space, personal boundaries. Again, we'll go into the astrology and I'll show you how this works. So where is that? Where, where, where are you allowing yourself to be exposed? Where, what are you exposing yourself to? Is that supporting healthy um, psychological and emotional um, stability within yourself? When you take information from the internet and you're exposing yourself to it, what is the state of the, of the emotional place that that person is writing that article from? Are they writing the article from a place of their own trauma? Are you taking in that trauma through being exposed and not knowing that trauma and then having your ideology or worldview being shaped by the impression of said experience, just like with listening to me, you know? So this imagery in a very intense way just highlights this incredibly profound way that our nervous system and our sensory perception interfaces with the world, interfaces with the multiple realities, and multiple things come out of this. Are you and how do you feel when being exposed? You feel vulnerable. You feel that you are susceptible to danger. You're susceptible to manipulation. You're susceptible to all sorts of things that can have negative effects on your reality. And how conscious are you in your day of protecting that sacred land that is your body, that sacred land that is your thinking, sacred land that is your field of awareness. Yeah. Now, I'm also encouraging you while I'm saying this to not, again, if this is something that's interesting to you, I'm encouraging you to not have a very quick response to, oh yeah, I do this, I do that, but actually really sit with this, really sit with your relationship to your things, sit with your relationship to the people in your life, sit with the relationship to your work, which leads me to the next thing. Okay, so these, these faces over here, they're all kind of compiled together and they're all sitting in this, but they're, from my point of view, they're kind of lying on the ground and they, they look used, they look tarnished, they look, they look like they've been in full service, you know, all the scratches on it, you know, looks like it's been weathered, looks like it's been in battle, Look like it's been at the forefront of protecting yourself. And that comes to the next thing, protection protection mechanisms, defense mechanisms. Why do we have them? Why does the psyche have them? And the answer is exposed. When we have an experience when we're younger as a child, and so just to insert over here, the Saturn course that I talked about, that I have on the website, it is specifically designed to heal or to be conscious and pay attention to the themes that I'm about to talk to you right now. So, and that is that as you were in your child, 
there are large parts of your life where you may have felt or experienced um, that your sense of autonomy, your sense of sovereignty, your sense of decision-making, your sense of ability to make a boundary, uh, not only is not available all the time, but was also um, surrendered at will because if you, as a six-year-old, say no to the parent and the parent turns around and says, I'm the boss, you do what I say, you're threatened, your security is threatened. And so by being exposed in vulnerability, you will always learn to create small residues of protection and defense mechanisms. Now, for most of us on this planet, for most of us that are listening to this over here, these responses have created personalities that look like this on the screen. And they are personalities that express the pain, the sadness of having to put away the true self and authenticity like Dr. Gabor Matea talks about and enforce a protection or behavioral pattern that will that looks like how do I um, create secure attachment because it's natural for us at that young age, even growing up, even till the age of 14 when our Saturn return, our Saturn opposition comes along, we are always trying to form bonds with caregivers. What has this got to do with the astrology, Simon? What has this got to do with reality and dysregulation in 2020? You know, it has so much to do with it. In fact, it has not not that not that it's just a simple thing that in 2021 we're not going to be dealing with. I'm saying to you right now that this material, this conversation, this expression, this image over here is going to be the forefront of what is going to heal or at least make your life a lot better, okay, to deal with what we're going to move through in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Because when, mark my words, when Jupiter and Saturn hit Aquarius, okay, and you are still being emotionally dysregulated by impressions that have zero interest in your well-being but are there because of whatever, you are going to find yourself going into even more states of disassociation and um, isolation and then eventually complete emotional disconnect, which is what these things ultimately represent to me. They represent emotional disconnect. They represent lack of emotion. They represent psychopathy. They represent um, the, the trauma that we have all endured in which the message has always been consistently, don't feel your emotions. They are bad. Don't allow yourself to, if you, if you have an emotional outburst, there's something wrong with you. You need to fix yourself. Take this pill because everything in the societal structure is rooted in the happy face. And although some of these pictures could actually be perceived as happy faces, they are masks that we wear in order to meet agreements and in a social way, it is masks that we wear in order for us to protect ourselves from feeling early, early life trauma of being exposed. It is personalities and false egos that ultimately are a construct of yourself. And this is not authenticity. And if you are a Pluto and Scorpio person that listens to this from 1983 to 1995, you will know from direct experience growing up, why is it that when I'm at a family meeting or when I'm interacting with a family experience, that there's such superficiality. Why is it that there is such superficiality? And you're like, this doesn't make sense. Why are we not talking about the way that dad, you know, this, why are we championing these false self-imported um, personality traits that are, uh, you know, you know that 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 don't nurture, support, or care, but seem like emotionally absent behavior or patterns. The more that you come to terms with the fact that each and every single one of us carries a few of these little iron masks in our subconscious, we are consciously aware of them, or they are just there as protecting organisms. We need to be conscious of the fact that this 
is a time in which we need to actually, and this is going to sound crazy, we need to begin exposing these false definitions, these false masks, these false um, personalities that we put on as not like something negative or judgmental or guilt oriented but actually coming from a place of incredible self-compassion. In other words, okay, so when I grew up, I had an abusive family. Now we're going to have a personality trait around that, i.e., People can get addicted to a trauma personality and it's like, oh, I'm a victim to this thing and I'll always remain that. That is still a false self. It is just that we are meeting, we're being able to, to have the other side of the situation meant. People feel sorry for me, I get feel sorry for, it improves my, my protection mechanisms, um, ability to feel that it is nourished and I go along my life just consistently searching for false, uh, you know, um, people who support the false self, but they don't know this. This is also deeply embedded within the collective and consciousness. And we need to expose these things. You need to expose it in yourself so that you can remove these things, take them off, take these weights off, take these personalities and protection mechanisms off. Now, I'm also saying very, very clearly that this process of unmasking is going to feel sometimes like going through hell. And that's because it is the rightful role of this mechanism to protect yourself from things that are dangerous. And so when you decide to go, you know what, I need to work on myself. I need to begin to recognize my own emotional dysregulation traumas. I need to self-inquire. I need to understand why that's the case. What you do is you allow yourself very, very slowly to acknowledge why those are there in the first place. Thank you so much for protecting me at the age of seven when this personality trait kicked up. Thank you. But I no longer need your services anymore. I no longer need to feel like I need to be protected if you are at this place in your life, if you have the option to do that. And then you start to actually go through the grieving state. You go through the acceptance that this is an event that took place in your life. Then you go through the experience of allowing yourself to go back to that emotional flashback point. And again, I will put in Pete Walker's work in the description over here for you all to listen to, to take in. It is important. Go and explore Dr. Garber Mateo's work. You know, these guys are professionals in this field that have been doing this work for a tremendous amount of period of time. And now it's time for them to be exposed to people like me and you who are deeply, deeply wanting to live more emotionally raw and emotionally authentic and to not have to put on personality traits and fake personas from trauma traumatizing experiences in order to meet the world relative to what the world de deems authentic or not that is not for the world to decide it is for you to decide and so in a roundup of this long message of epic um, narcissistic <laughs> performance as in I have the answer. Let's go to the astrology and let's move to uh, a part of what it is that I'm talking about here. Okay. So there's Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, all sitting in Capricorn. And the Capricorn is the mask, the protection mechanism. Here's Mars sitting at 26 degrees moving through Aries. And you know that for those of you that have been following me for a long period of time, I've always been saying, Uranus and Aries for 2012 to 2018 squared Pluto and brought all of this nonsense to the surface, all of the trauma to the surface, but it is not Uranus's role to heal the trauma. It is Uranus's role to awaken it. It is Chiron's role to heal it. So while Chiron is in Aries right now, and for all of you that have Chiron and Aries, this is, this is something that is going to be deeply important to you is where are my boundaries? What does autonomy look like to me? And how can I learn to say, no, this is not correct for me. I do not consent to this process. I am saying no. Does that make sense? How are you learning to become emotionally free from codependency? How are you learning to become emotionally free from needing to people please? How are you becoming emotionally free from learning how to consistently all the time say yes to things, right? So Chiron and Aries is now healing 
the material that came to the surface. And so this will be Chiron's role for the next five, six years while it's in Aries. And this aspect here, that square that's taking place, okay, Mars is going, hey, by the way, let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, come on, come on. Everything come to the surface. So there's a tremendous amount of energy arriving from Mars that is being pulsated from Pluto. For those of you that know evolutionary astrology, you'll understand the correlation between Mars and Pluto being the unconscious drives and the person that makes those unconscious drives conscious. So the evolutionary intention over here is to expose what has been repressed, expose what has been repressed, expose what is not working anymore uh, within Pluto. And Saturn's in a new phase, even though it's retrograde. So we're building at the moment with Saturn over here, a strong emotional foundation that can support us for the next 29 years. And what's that foundation on? Emotional inner security. In other words, to process where your attachments are, to process where you have felt vulnerable and then created an, a protection mechanism, to process the self-images that you've needed to use consciously or unconsciously to, to support yourself in a sick world, you know, in that way. To break to emotionally, Venus and Cancer, internalize a sense of safety and security to meet your own personal needs so that Chiron can come along and say, you know what, I'm not going to trade security for authenticity. I'm willing to be brave and emotionally secure enough to trade, to not trade emotional security for authenticity. If it's not authentic for myself, then it is not correct for me. And to trust that, Neptune and Pisces, to trust that. Now, these little personality traits, these little personality ironclads, etc., all formed with this. And these energies at the moment are deeply, deeply supporting and bringing material to the surface for us to be healed. And this healing process comes through the acknowledgement of childhood trauma that you experienced, that you didn't have a choice in. And now you're coming to terms with the fact that that is at the root of a tremendous amount of your emotional dysregulation. Go back to that space, heal yourself. Allow yourself to be understood from that small space. Because when the sun, not sun, when Venus enters Leo, which I'll do a video on, it's going to inconjunct all of these aspects over here. And when Venus leaves Leo, Saturn will go direct, right? So Venus is going to come along. It's going to say, every single one of you establish a healthy emotional security in you. The way that you do that is you start to check in with all of your things that dysregulate you. Why are they there? What is the root of your emotional dysregulation. And then don't attack it from, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at this, or you know, I'm, I'm triggered by that. Why did you get triggered? And can you go back to the roots of the trigger and with compassion and say, okay, I see I wasn't able to express, I felt helpless at the time. Nobody had the emotional literacy to say to me that it was okay to feel helpless. And here's an option for the nervous system to feel safe in that moment. That's what causes these false personas of emotionally absent uh, expressions that feel hard, that feel so painful. You know, when Venus moves through here, it's going to come through and it's going to say, it's time to grow up. It's time to mature the inner child. It's time to go from the puree, the autonomous puree to the senex, to come into our adulthood so that we can be more authentic. This is the path to authenticity, and this is the Saturn cause. You cannot individuate. You cannot individuate. You cannot find creative purpose and deep meaning if you haven't done your Saturn work in your astrology chart. And the only way to understand your Saturn work is to recognize what it is that it actually represents within your emotional dynamics. The Saturn will not give you permission to go to the Uranian, Neptunian, and Pluto realm if you have not established a healthy sense of self that is emotionally stable enough to deal with the unconscious. It is a, it is a prerequisite. And that, that work is not something that just goes, oh yeah, I did my Saturn work. It's not about that. It's actually understanding that if you want to experience a Plutonian transformation, how are you going to deal with when Pluto comes along and says, okay, here's the three-headed dogs that I'd like you to deal with. What looks like, what will look like some intense emotional attachments to um, something. And do you, do you fear that attachment? Do you fear exposing a illusion within yourself? If you can't do that, your Saturn work is not done. 
So this is not this is not playground stuff. This is not like let's just you know oh cool I'm looking at astrology as a mechanism to numb to make me feel good about my future. I'm looking at astrology as a deep tool that allows me to introspect and transform my inner nature so that I can actually come closer to the essence of what I actually am versus the false personas that I've needed to create and put in place in order to protect myself from experiences that were way overwhelming, that were way too confusing to me as a seven-year-old when I never got the parent to say, it's safe now, you know, these types of things. So that's my video today, everybody. A couple of things I want to put out across for you right at the moment. So this is about removing guilt and shame. This is about removing internalized guilt and shame from yourself where you feel like you're failing at life. This is about positive reinforcement. Hey, you might have a lot of things that you're doing right now. You might be recovering from codependency. You might be recovering from early life childhood trauma. Give yourself the space to breathe and see that these false personas are not a product of your inadequacy, but a product of needing to protect yourself from a really, 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 really emotionally barren world. That's that. Two or, th or three, wherever you are right now, you're on the path to authenticity. Check in with yourself every single time you engage in something. Am I being authentic or am I trading it for safety? Okay. Four, check out the Saturn course. It's really, really important during this period of time when you have the space to be able to digest it. It's on my website. And five or six, let's go with five. Five, check out Instagram. We do daily posts on Instagram. We also do that on our Patreon page as well. Um, and our Patreon page is there to connect with the community in a safe space and to begin processing deeper material if you need that. All right. And check out the description below as well for Pete Walker's material and some other links. All right. Okay, peeps. Catch you later.